Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most merciful. The Get close and loud. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. This is from the chapter Fusilat, 30 to 35. Truly those who say our Lord is God and are upright, the angels will descend upon them saying, have neither fear nor sadness, but rather rejoice in this paradise that you had been promised. We are your allies in this lower life and in the hereafter where you will have your heart's desire and you will have whatever you ask for hospitably from one most forgiving, most merciful. Who is more beautiful in speech than the one who invites to God and does righteous works saying, truly, I am one submitted to God for good and evil are not equal. Repel ugliness with beauty and behold, the one between you and whom there was enmity is transformed into a warm friend. But no one arrives at this station without great patience and immense fortune. Sadaqallah al azim we, we thank Sheikh Hamza Yusuf for that translation and we thank you for remaining calm. So a little bit more of the calm and I think we're in good shape. Please allow our sisters to come forth. In the meantime, we're going to hear a few words from Dr. Sherman Jackson, who may well be considered the leading public intellectual of the American Muslim community. Lend him your ear. Lend him your ear. Maintain the calm. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Friends, family, brothers and sisters, I would like to bid you with the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I would like to begin my words by extending my heartfelt condolences to the family of our beloved champion Muhammad Ali. For millions, perhaps billions of people across the world, of every race, of every religion, of every political persuasion, and every nationality. The passing of Muhammad Ali has made us all feel a little more alone in the world. It has taken some of them away from their sweetness of life itself, and it has brought us all a nagging sense of sadness. Something solid, something big, something beautiful and life-affirming has left this world, and it is beyond the capacity of any of us to know if God will ever grace us again with anything that even comes close to the majesty that was Muhammad Ali. But Ali was not just a public figure. He was a husband, a father, a son, a brother. And if his passing has brought a certain emptiness to the lives of millions of people who never knew him personally, never felt the energy of his magical presence, never tasted the reassuring comfort of his loving embrace, and never had to live with the weight or the magnitude of his worries. If Ali's passing could have this effect on these throngs of distant lovers from across the globe, I can hardly begin to imagine the depths of his family's sense of loss. So to the family of our beloved champion, I would like to say, may Allah, may God Almighty shower his blessings his strength, his mercy, and his compassion upon you all. May he provide you, as the days and the years wear on, with a solace that is so defiant in its depths and so tenacious in its grip that you know 
that it could only come from God. And may part of your solace come from the fact that you ultimately recognize that your sense of loss is only so great because God's gift to you in the person of Muhammad Ali was itself so singular and so magnificent. But Ali was not only a gift to his family, he was a gift to his people, his religion, his country, and ultimately to the world. As for his people, Ali was an unapologetic fighter in the cause of black people in America. And not just the classes among black folks, but even more especially, the masses. Ali was the people's champion, and champion he did the cause of his people. You see, the key to dominating a people is not simply to subject them to unjust laws, institutions, and social cultural norms. The key is to get them to accept this as normal, as just the way things are, as our way of life. It is to get them to internalize the sense that their role in life is simply to live as others tell them to live, and then to be thankful that those others are willing to allow them to live so. It is to take a people's story away from them and then assign them some jive time supporting role in your story. Once this happens, a people can never just be themselves. They must always perform according to what you say is normal. And they will be judged, awarded, or penalized based on how well they follow your script. In this state of mind, a dominated people remain convinced that reality is always fashioned by someone else, that they themselves can only function as consumers, never as producers of the fundamental values, conventions, ideas, and institutions that shape life. Ali took a wrecking ball to all of this, and his brilliance and his lasting endurance lies in the fact that he touched us all exactly where we needed to be touched, in our hearts and in the very deepest depths of our souls. Ali gave us identity, a new, authentic way of being ourselves. He gave us pride and confidence. He taught us that we were beautiful and that what we thought was right or wrong was just as worthy of consideration as what others thought was right or wrong. Ali inspired us. He filled us up. He gave us courage. And he taught us something about how to fight, not only inside the ring, but outside as well. For even in defeat, Ali showed the grace, the humility, and the forward resolve and determination of a true champion. This is the stuff that transformed the lives of millions of black Americans, myself included. So many of us would never have achieved what we have been able to achieve were it not for the selfless sacrifice, the boundless courage, and the love-filled inspiration of this great man. As for his religion, there can be no doubt that at the very center of Ali's being was Islam. Islam was both a source of his strength and the sustainer of his sense of mission. About this, there simply can be no doubt. But beyond what Islam did for Ali, Ali did something for Islam, especially in America. Ali did more to normalize Islam in this country than perhaps any other Muslim in the history of the United States. Of course, Ali was not a theologian, a sheikh, or an imam. And because of this, some might think that I am overstating my case here. But here is a news flash. 
Most people do not live in the world of the theologians or the scholars. Most people live in the world of culture. And while religious scholars play a critical role in preserving the proper understanding of religion, if the prevailing culture does not reinforce and give practical meaning to their teachings, those teachings will find limited application among the masses. It is one thing to teach that God wants people to be charitable to the poor, or that he does not want them to eat pork. It is quite another thing, however, to produce a cultural orthodoxy that makes generosity cool and eating pork uncool. The same applies to standing up for what is right and standing against what is wrong. As a cultural icon, Ali made Muslim, or Ali made being Muslim cool. Ali made being a Muslim dignified. Ali made being a Muslim relevant. And all of this he did in a way that no one could challenge his belongingness to or in this country. Ali put the question of whether a person can be a Muslim and American to rest. Indeed, he KO'd that question. With his passing, let us hope that that question will now be interred with his precious remains. As for his country, there is a hadith, a statement of the Prophet Muhammad, in which he instructs the Muslims, help your brother, whether he is right or wrong. The Prophet's companions asked him, O oh, Messenger of God, we understand that we must help our brother when he is right, but how can we help him when he is wrong? The Prophet responded, stop him from doing the wrong that he does. Ali helped this country move closer to its own ideals. He helped America do and see some things that America was not quite ready to do or see on its own. And because of Ali's heroic efforts, America is a better place today for us all. And in this regard, Ali belongs not just to the Muslims of this country. Ali belongs to all Americans. Whether you are black, white, Asian or Latina, Jewish, Christian, Muslim or atheist, if you are an American, Ali is part of your history, part of what makes you who you are. Thus, as an American, Ali belongs to you, and you too should be proud of this precious piece of your American heritage. And you should never allow anyone to deny you or disabuse you of your rightful claim to Ali's legacy. As for the world, who has filled the world with more hope more inspiration, more empathy, more humility, and more goodwill than Muhammad Ali. Till the end, after all he had gone through in his life, despite his debilitating illness and all the other reasons he could have relied upon to be angry, vindictive, and insensitive to the sufferings of others, after all of this, there is <clears throat> no hatred in Ali, no bitterness, no malice. There was nothing but a bigness of heart and a graciousness of spirit and goodwill towards everyone. What a gift. As I close, I would like to say something for the record. And I would like to say it to Muhammad Ali himself. Ali, I love you, man. And I have loved you for a very long time. And I will continue to love you, to cherish your memory, and to celebrate your legacy. And this I will do, God willing, for as long as I shall remain on this planet. For now, however, I must bid you farewell. So I say to you, so long, my illustrious champion, my ever-present inspiration, my hero, my Muslim brother. May God's peace and blessings caress you and comfort you until that time that you meet him. Until then, my beloved, rest, rest in peace. And know, as I know now, the true meaning of those prophetic 
indeed those divine words, Salam Alaikum. Salam Alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. All right, now we're going to hear and we appreciate your cooperation. The front rows, please, if you could just move back a little. Move back a little so that the policemen can have more space and they too can move back. We're going to hear now from Dalia Mujahid, someone who has made the Muslim community of North America very proud during these, this recent history. Again, she is one of our great scholars, activists, intellectuals, and a great Muslim mom. Dalia, salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I greet you with peace during the holiest month of Ramadan. We are gathered here today to remember and to pray for a man whose name means praised in the heavens and the earth, praised by God and praised by the people. A man who Sports Illustrated named the Sportsman of the Century. Time Magazine named as one of the 20 most influential Americans in history. Muhammad Ali, the people's champ. We gather in Freedom Hall, the location of his first professional fight in Louisville, to recognize a man who taught us how to be free. He called Muhammad his free name. It symbolized for him a decision to put his principles above popularity, his conscience before conformity. And he was willing to pay any price for this belief. He taught us to be free by showing us what it meant to own fortune and glory as a means to serve God but never to let fortune and glory own him. They were in his hands, not in his heart. He was free, unshackled by the chains of worldly attachments. He dreamed of being the heavyweight champion of the world since he was a child. Yet he was willing to have the initial fight with Sonny Liston canceled rather than disavow his faith or his relationship with Malcolm X. When he finally was able to fight Liston and win the title he had always dreamed of, he sacrificed millions because risk jail time endured vicious hate and daily death threats because he refused to go to war. His own friends and family were pressing him under that tremendous weight and pressure to conform. Greater than any opponent he could have faced in the ring, Muhammad was victorious, emerging as a free man who couldn't be bought or guilted into violating his conscience. He never ran from a fight. He fought every battle he faced with dignity. He didn't leave the country to avoid the draft. He fought a fair fight until the highest court in the land gave him his justice. He exemplified dignity. As Dr. Jackson wrote, he challenged us and showed us what it meant to fight and hit hard, inside and outside the ring, without bitterness, without malice, and without apology. Ali's understanding of the oneness of God, that he would answer only to God, submit only to God, made him see the oneness of humanity. He was an athlete who was not expected to have an opinion, much less one that so sharply countered the tide 
Yet, he saw a picture of a little Vietnamese girl, wide-eyed among a row of mangled bodies of Vietnamese killed by American force, and his instinctual compassion compelled him to stay out of this war. So let this day, as we stand here in every color and creed, let this day help us remember God's promise. When you seek the pleasure of the people against God, God will make the people displeased with you. But when you seek God's pleasure in spite of the people, God will make the people pleased with you. Thank you. Now we're going to hear now from one of our distinguished attorneys, one of those children Muhammad Ali played with, and a very, very esteemed community activist, Sister Khadija Drinkard. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khadija Sharif Drinkard, and I first met Muhammad Ali as a student at Sister Clara Muhammad School in Harlem, New York. He would come to my fourth grade class and tell us that we could be anything we wanted to be. He would share his vision of what he expected from us and the responsibility we had to be excellent in whatever we endeavored to accomplish. He was playful and simultaneously serious. He was a giant, but gentle and kind. He would buy us bean pies and carrot cakes from the local Muslim bakery. And he always left us with a powerful message about our history and our religion. Those lessons and interactions that I had with him at nine years old stayed with me throughout my life. And the same love and encouragement that Muhammad Ali shared with us, he shared with the world. He had the ability to make anyone who came in contact with him feel special. He ignited a fire in us that made us believe that we too would be great. What he was able to accomplish in the span of his lifetime is nothing short of extraordinary. He went from being a champion to becoming a hero by standing up for what he believed and being courageous enough to sacrifice his freedom for the well-being of others. His stance as a conscientious objector to the Vietnam War inspired and emboldened all of us. His willingness to give up his possessions taught us that the real prize is integrity, morality, and dignity. His ability to win over mainstream America and the entire world with his wit, humor, and intellectual curiosity at a time when black men were punished for speaking out was a testament to his skill and his fearlessness. And while he could spar with any fighter or media personality and always come out on top, perhaps he was most beloved because he showed us how dynamic and brilliant we are as a people. As a young African-American Muslim girl growing up in the heart of Harlem, at the epicenter, of poverty and disenfranchisement. He inspired me and gave me a voice. When others did not hear me, he spoke for me. He amplified my voice in the voice of millions. He told us that we mattered. He humanized our story and the stories of others who were marginalized and pushed to the fringes of society. He gave us exactly what we needed when we needed it. His confidence and audacity in his early years were equally matched by his humility and compassion in his later life. And while Muhammad Ali was undoubtedly Muslim, the world claims him. His legacy is clear. Allah loaned him to us for a time and taught us lessons through his life, as he did through the life of Imam Warif D. Muhammad. And now we must use their legacies and their lessons to uplift our community and the world community for the better. We must be a bridge between Muslims and all good intentions and right-minded people. We must demystify our faith 
and share our good ideas with the world. We must follow his lead and be unapologetic about having big dreams and fighting against injustice and fighting for the upliftment of the human spirit. So I say to you today, in honor of Muhammad Ali's life and legacy, that I am Muhammad Ali, that you are Muhammad Ali, that there is a world of Muhammad Ali's, and that the lessons that he taught me at nine years old, I still live with them today. He taught me to love humanity, to speak the truth, to be courageous in the face of adversity, to push oneself beyond what I thought was imaginable, to understand and accept that God is always in charge. But most importantly, he taught me that God Almighty is the greatest. Assalamu alaikum.